Good day, dear students, and welcome to your presentation for Social Science 4 for 2022. I'm your tutor, Mr. Arendt Dishena. My details are displayed on the screen. Welcome to the Bachelor of Education, Senior Primary, Social Science 4 presentation. Please note that this presentation covers the subject content in summary for the 2022 April, August and November examinations. And it is by no means a scope for the examinations. However, note that all examination questions are compulsory in this subject. Unit one. In unit one, unit one deal with understanding the rationale and pedagogics in social studies. Here you are expected as a social science student to explain the aims of social studies syllabus. You are expected to explain the curriculum standard for social studies learners. And also you are expected to outline what learner-centered education is. Please note the last bullet there. Learner-centered education, very key in the current way of teaching. So you should, it is expected that you understand that one clearly. Unit 2, Planning and Lesson Preparation in Social Studies. Very important that you plan proper lessons and present proper lessons as a social science teacher. Here you are expected to identify the parts of a lesson preparation, identify and outline the following method to, the to follow when presenting social study lessons. For example, the textbook method, the question and answer method, the class discussion, the source method, the inquiry method, and the project method. You are expected to identify and be able to explain or to differentiate between these types of methods. You are also expected to distinguish the role of subject heads from that of the teacher in improving learning performance. This is to avoid a teacher, you as a teacher and your HOD not knowing your limitations as far as your responsibilities are concerned. So it's very important to understand that part. Unit 4, the development of Namibian nationalism. Here you are expected to explain what nationalism is with specific reference to Namibia. Also, you are expected to outline the formation of OPO, OPO, and the role played by Semni Yoma in its formation. Please note that in your explanation or in answering questions in social study, you need to use answering words, such as explain, then you must understand what, it, what is required from you, outline, then you must understand what is expected of you, distinguish or discuss. These are key words that you need to understand before you answer your questions in social sciences. In this unit, you are also expected to explain the following events in the history of Namibia. The Winduk massacre, what was it, when did it take place, and precisely what happened. The Kasinga massacre, what I said already applied to this one as well. And you are also expected to discuss the formation of Swapo. How was it formed? Who were the role players in forming this? Was it Swapo from the beginning or when did this abbreviation come from? And then you are also expected to discuss the origin of the war for national liberation. How did it start? Where did it originate? Unit 5. These are features of the South African colonial administration you should be able to first understand what is colonial administration before you go on to explain or understand the features. Here you are expected to explain how South Africa inherited Namibia from the United Nations. What happened? What was it? What, why was Namibia given to South Africa by the United Nations and what were the conditions? You are also expected here to discuss the Odendal plan which was very key in allocating people to specific areas of settlement. You are expected to describe the classes between the UN and South Africa over Namibia. There were a lot of debate between UN and South Africa. There were a lot of classes. So you should be able to describe a few incidents as far as that is concerned. 
you are expected to highlight the role of the Western Conduct Group. There was, this was a group of countries that called themselves the Western Conduct Group. You, as a social science teacher, should be able to highlight the role it played. You are also expected to illustrate and analyze the reasons why the United Nations, the African Union, and SWAPO refused to recognize the Ten Hall Constitution. What were the reasons they advanced for to not accept this uh, constitution? Then explain what the tier governments were. In detail, discuss the transitional government of national unity and identify and explain the role that SWAPO played in liberating Namibia. In explaining in, in detail the transitional government of national unity, you are expected to first understand its background and what it did and therefore also take it from there and make sure that you understand all the discussion that took place before it was brought into existence. Unit 6, the role of the church on the road to independence. There were a lot of entities that play specific roles towards achieving independence. One of these entities was the churches. Now here you are expected to describe the role that the churches played in the liberation of Namibia. What role did the church play? They played a very, very key role. So as a social science or history teacher, you are expected to really understand and bolt out of the role that it played. You are also expected to analyze the main criticism of the South African rule, which were highlighted in the open letter. You should explain what this open letter was and what criticism were highlighted in this specific letter. Who wrote to this letter and what was the intention of writing this letter? You are expected to identify and clarify the reasons why the ECC was established. You must explain what it was, why it was established, and really what role it played. You are also expected to identify and clarify the reasons for the establishment of a Council of Churches in Namibia. How did the Council of Churches come into existence, what we refer to as CCN? How did CCN come into existence and what, for what reason was, was it started? You are also expected to critically, please underline, critically explain the ICAM's declaration of churches in Namibia. What was this declaration? You need to explain critically why it took place and what came out of it. Unit 7, the events this deal with the event prior to Namibia becoming a republic and the constitutional protection of human rights. At the back of your mind, you must understand very key here what a republic is, and what a constitution is, and what protections are guaranteed in the constitution before you go on to explain the following. Here you are expected to explain what resolution 435 of 1978 was, what is a resolution, why was it tempted or given this specific number, and what role did this specific year play in the establishment or bringing into being of this resolution 435. You are expected to explain and evaluate the Western Conduct Group and the 1982 principles. What were these principles and what did they have to do with the group of countries that call themselves the Western Conduct Group? You are also expected to explain the following UNTAG activities. UNTAG stands for United Nations Transitional Assistance Group, which assisted Namibia in gaining or managing the process towards independence. Now here you are expected to explain what, repat what role it played as far as repat repatriation of refugees was concerned, what role it played as far as registration of voters was concerned, and what role it play as far as voter education was concerned. You are also expected to identify features of the Namibian constitution, outline, in other words, outline the features of the Namibian constitution and you need to understand them because as I highlighted above already, it's very key in understanding the issue of human rights in Namibia. Highlights the authority in, in doing that, you need to highlight to 
see it as the highest authority, and that you also need to understand the Constitution can only be changed through a referendum, and you need to explain or understand what a referendum is. And then three, it, you need to understand that it stipulated three government, three different government branches, a Bill of Fundamental Rights, a regular, free and fair elections. These are features of the Namibian Constitution and you really need to understand them and be able to explain them to your learners. Unit 8. Unit 8 deal with the African struggle for independence and economic development. As a social science student, you are expected to examine the origin of the Pan-African movement, examine the organization of African unity, abbreviated OAU, with regards to its aim, success, and shortcoming. Most of this organization came into being with the specific aims, and some of them succeeded, some of them failed. You need to understand the aims, why they were started with, how successful they were, and then identify those specific shortcomings as a social science teacher. You should be able to analyze the difference between democracy and dictatorship, differentiate between military and civilian rule. If you are keen, if you have a keen eye for news, you should have picked up that there were quite a number of coups in Africa that led to military rules. So it is the right moment to then explain and distinguish between military and civilian rule. You should be able to identify the features of capitalism, socialism, and mixed economies, identify factors that cause economic crisis in Africa, evaluate plans for economic development in Namibia, and evaluate, very important, evaluate the effectiveness of World Bank and IMF regulation for Africa. Is it good or is it bad? You are the student, you should be able to evaluate this. Unit 9, key social, political, and economic development in world history in the 20th century. Here you are expected to identify and describe peace treaties after the First World War, clarify the development of fascism in Italy and Nazism in Germany, identify the basic features of communism in China, explain what Cold War was, explain the aims and function of the League of Nations, explain the aims and function of the United Nations, describe the, organiza describe the organization of petroleum producing countries, OPEC, describe the Southern African Development Community, and at the end clarify the function of World Bank and International Monetary Fund. You should have realized by now that this specific uh, unit, it has these uh, keywords, identify, clarify, explain, describe. So these are very key, as I said earlier, these are very key in social study and you need to understand in order to, un to understand them in order to appropriately answer the questions. Unit 10, how to interpret and read different features of MAPS and whether data. I've realized that a couple of students do struggle with this part of social science, which is more geography, geographically inclined. So as a, student, as a student in social sciences, this will be before you in a class setup. So you really need to prepare and understand this aspect. Here you are expected to identify relief maps. In other words, you should be able to differentiate between maps Identify and analyze contour lines. What are these contour lines? How do you present them to learners? You need to understand them first before you present them. Identify types of slopes on a given map, meaning you need to be able to read a map and identify slopes that are displayed there. Describe how to orientate the map. How do you read a map? How are learners supposed to read map? You should be able to understand that as a teacher before you put you give it to the learners or you pass it on to the learners. You should also be able to describe elements of weather on a given map. Identify weather instruments analyze, and analyze weather data and be able to differentiate between high and low pressure system and explain 
the influence of weather elements on local climate. This is a very interesting and very critical chapter or unit in our social sciences and it needs to be understood by all students because it is key in teaching the geography. Unit 11, features of the Namibian ecology. Differentiate between natural and man-made damages to the environment. This is very key as if you look at the world we are living in at the moment. There is a lot of emphasis in uh, conserving our environment, so this part of differentiating between natural and man-made damages to the environment is very critical and need to be understood. Here you should also be able to illustrate the importance of vegetation. What role does vegetation play? Clarify the danger of deforestation. First understand what is deforestation and then clarify its danger. You should be able to describe the causes and effect of bush encroachment. Again, you need to understand first what is bush encroachment before you describe the causes and the effects. Define the term desertification. Define the term desertification. So what is desertification and what implications are there if we have desertification? You should be able to explain the effect of overpopulation on the environment. You can, took the, you can take the case of Windhoek. Uh, what effect are you seeing it there is a result of overpopulation in Windhoek. You should be able to explain the effect of population on land, water, and atmosphere, and also propose, very important, also propose solutions to compact environmental deterioration. As a social science teacher, you are expected to propose solutions to this environmental problem but that you can only do if you understand what they are. Geomorphology, that is unit 12. Here you must explain the causes of the plate movement. Underground here, plate movement, you should be able to explain what they are and how they move and what is causing that particular movement. You should also be able to differentiate between converging diverging and shear plate boundaries, identify major landforms on a map, explain the relationship between plate tectonics, earthquakes, volcanism, and fold mountain ranges, explain the causes of earthquakes, evaluate the impact of earthquakes on civilization, evaluate the positive and negative impact of volcanoes on civilization, and identify agents of weathering and erosion. As you can see, this is again a part that is more geographically inclined, also causing a lot of trouble to some students. So please read this chapter very well in detail and understand it as it is. Population geography. Here you are expected to analyze factors which influence population distribution and density explain the causes for rapid increase in world population. In other words, why is the world population getting bigger? And what is causing this? You are also expected to describe a population distribution and density in Namibia. Please understand key words here. Population distribution and density. You need to understand this word in order to move on in answering questions as far as population is concerned. You should be able to explain the following terms, fertility, mortality, net migration, and also factors influencing them. What are the factors that influences fertility, mortality, and net migration? You should be able to describe benefits and problems of population change in terms of the following. Rural urban migration, rapid population growth, social standards, dependency ratio, pressure on natural resources, infrastructure, and provision of services. You should then, as I said earlier in the previous unit, you should be able to propose strategies on how to reduce the spread of HIV. Unit 14, the regional geography of Namibia. Identify Namibia's neighboring states on a world map that is very particular especially for social sciences in grade four four five and even six the way learners are expected to know and to be able to identify 
Namibia's neighboring states on the world map or even on African map. You should also be able to identify the following physiographic features of Namibia on a given map. They are a coastal plain, the escarpment, the plateau, the Kalahari Basin, and the Etosha Basin. You should be able to identify this feature on a given map. You should be able to analyze the following factors which influences the climate of Namibia, such as latitude, altitude, the low and high pressure system, Benguela current, distance from the sea. So what do these elements have to do with the climate of Namibia? That is the question that you need to answer. You should be able to evaluate the economic importance of the fishing, farming, and mining industries in Namibia. We all know that fishing, mining, and farming are very key in the development of Namibia. So you should be able to evaluate their importance to our economy. You should be able to describe the diamond and uranium mining industry in Namibia, identify and discuss the road, rail, a and ocean transport in Namibia, explain how the following factor influences economic growth. You should be able to explain how the following factors influences economic growth. That is mineral and water resources, the manufacturing industries, education, the capital and population. So how do these factors influence the economic growth of Namibia? And then also be able to discuss the origin, the purpose, responsibility, and problem of SACO and SADC. These were entities that were established with a specific purpose or aims and objective. Now you should be able to discuss how they were started with, what purpose they serve or they are serving, and the responsibility that is given to these entities. That was the end of these presentations. Good luck for the exam and all the best. Thank you.